Hello, I'm Beko and in today's video we're gonna look at a few hands played by Lex Veldhaus on his way to his first scoop title. All of them come from a very stacked final table in a 5k buying tournament, so we can expect poker play on the highest level. Let's jump into the action. First hand starts with chip leader opening from middle position. Let's pause here for a moment and compare ICM ranges on the left to chip EV scenario on the right. In ICM scenario, chip leader can open wider, but cannot go crazy in still pretty early position. He will face less resistance on average, so blockers are getting more important than playability of the hand. He can add almost all offsuit aces to his range and almost all suited kings while cutting some of the worst suited connectors and gaffers, like 10-8 or 8-7. Overall, he can expand his range by around 33%, from 21% to 28%. This sounds like a lot, but the difference in how big blind responds to this opening is even larger. With the cheap EV scenario, we can defend 74% of our hands, mostly by calling, with less than 10% of free betting. But when we take ICM into consideration, our free betting range stays at 10%. But when we look at our calling range, it should be less than 20%. So overall, we should cut our calling range by 70%. In GPV, we can defend all kings, but in ICM, our king 10 off is on the bottom of our range. When we go to the flop, we've got very strong range, and despite being a bit capped, we're not at a big disadvantage. So we can actually dunk quite a lot on this flop. When we look at cheap EV range, it's pure check by big blind and see but 100% from object. In ICM scenario, where BB is pretty strong, cheap leader can't see but everything, so when he does, he usually uses bigger sizing and checks around half of his range. Against small sizing, there is not much folding. On the turn, low jack is barreling with almost half of his range, but solver prefers bigger sizing than 50%. When we look at BB response, on this very dynamic board we can actually check ship our king turn off. The single real mistake comes on the river. We see donk jump from legs, and when we look at solver range it's the only street where we shouldn't donk bet at all. In theory this bet makes no sense, because other players still want to bet the river, so we're not losing any value here, but we cut all opponent's bluffs. In the school grading scale, I'd give Lex 3 plus out of 6 for this one. Next hand, we're gonna look only at preflop play. Nacho opens 10 jack off, which is perfectly fine from the cutoff. Lex is in ICM cage, so he cannot go crazy here, and he should continue mostly by calling, with only best playable hands and even some very strong pairs like queens or kings. Our only real value known all in 3 bet is pocket aces and we can balance it with some low suited aces and even some offsuit aces. And our only value all in 3 bet is ace king and we should balance it with some worst suited aces. Another interesting question to ask here is why we should 3 bet ace 7 suited and start calling ace 8 suited. The answer is in the opening range of hijack. His bottom of suited hands are suited 8s. He opens 8-7 suited up to ace-8 suited, and when we look at suited 7s, he opens only king-7 and ace-7. So when we are 3-betting, we don't want to block hijacks folding range. It also has some post-flop implications, where we end up in a spot when we dominate part of our opponent's range. Despite having great spot to earn some chips, small blind can jump here with only 7% of hands. There are two shorter stacks than him, so there are almost no bluffs in his range, and even the worst hands are having a lot of equity when called. Because this range is so strong, Lex can call only ace queen plus and tens plus, so his fault is very good here. Five for this one. In the third hand, I just want to focus on preflop play here. As we can see, when we cover big blind and there is one very short stack at the table, we can ramp up our aggression a lot. There is almost no folding in that spot, there is less calling but more raising and a lot more jamming. We can triple up on our jamming range and raise a lot, because big blind here is handcuffed. Most of the offset kings want to play aggressively here. In theory there is some calling with jack king cock, so for this hand I give Lexa 4. In the next hand, 
Lex starts by opening on cutoff. As chip leader he can open almost half of hands. Big Blind, as the second biggest stack at the table, doesn't want to blow up the pot versus chip leader here, so there is almost no 3-betting here. He calls with around 50% range, so we go to post flop with almost same ranges for both players. Because of that, we can't see bet too much, just around 50% with small sizing. On the turn, Katov wants to barrel with around 50% of his range, using mostly bigger sizings. Ace-Queen off is pure check here. When we look at the play on the river, we see an oopsie from Nacho. He shouldn't overbet here at all. Versus this bet, Lex has a pretty easy game, calling all aces and folding the rest. Well played and 5 for that hand. The last hand takes place during 3-handed play. We've got a very interesting blind versus blind scenario, where the second biggest stack doesn't want to raise at all. Big blind should raise this link with 42% of hands. And there is some limp raises, but ace-jack off should mostly limp call. So well played by both players here. Now after this flop we have an unusual scenario where big blind has a range disadvantage on this flop, so he shouldn't bet too much. At jack 4 with two backdoors is a nice hand to see bet. One thing is, if we don't want to bet too much, we usually want to use bigger sizings. On the turn, Lex gets draw to gut shot and bets pretty big. That's solver approved, but with exact combo, solver prefers to overbet that turn. On the river, we have a mixed strategy. We want to have two sizings, and in overbets, we should have mostly two pairs and some bluffs. And the jack 4 off is the worst hand we get to the river with, so it makes a perfect bluff here. It might look like a punt at first sight, but big respect to Lex for pulling off this huge bluff in a very tense final table moment. He deserves 6 for this last hand and overall score of 5 minus. Good job! I hope you liked this video and learned something. Remember to subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video. Bye!